All right, guys, I'm going to do a quick video here where we're just going to watch the video um, from PayPal CEO Alex Chris and his commentary on the past of the company and what he's looking at for his future vision before the January 25th um, reveal for their new product. So here we go. Without further ado. Joining me now in his first interview since stepping into the role as the president and CEO of PayPal is Alex Chris. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, David. Good to be here. Um, it's good to have you. Uh, you know, the analysts don't seem to love the stock right now. It's just the last couple of weeks. I've taken a look at a few reports. Mizuho yesterday. Pay no, the analysts do not love the stock right now. That is very true. But that's a good thing. PayPal faces competitive pressure from A to Z, downgrade. Oppenheimer, PayPal, or per persistent profitability pressure has them downgrading it. Morgan Stanley, slower than expected progress on strategic imperatives. BTIG, too much uncertainty puts us on the side. Slower than expected progress. This man just started his job. Headlines. I mentioned those because I'm curious to get your response. So what do you say to these analysts to get them to change their mind? Or how do you? Well, look, we're an important company. Uh, we've got a quarter of the world's e-commerce running through PayPal. Uh, so that's why we've got 45 analysts following us. And, you know, look, to be honest, uh, there hasn't been a lot to celebrate over the last few years. I think innovation's been slow. Uh, the company's been growing, but hasn't been putting out real customer back innovation. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm so excited about it going forward. So look, I love being an underdog. I'll, I'll, I'll take all of that feedback and uh, we'll shock the world. Yeah, you think you're gonna shock the world. How are you gonna? I think it's great that he set expectations and said, hey, this company hasn't been doing well for the last couple of years. They haven't been innovating. We're working on it. Good stuff. I'm gonna do that. We've got an innovation day coming out uh, on the 25th uh, where, from the first week that I got there, uh, this was not about trying to figure out what to go do. It is very clear what we need to do. Uh, 24 will be a, a transition year for, for us, but it'll be all about execution, and it starts with innovation. So on the 25th, we're going to come out. We have very clear customer back innovation that we will be rolling out for consumers, for our merchants, uh, for Venmo, and uh, I think it'll be a good good start any, to this year. Any hot, anything you can tell us at this he seems very confident on his path already, even though this man has been doing this job for like, I don't know, three months, a little bit over. And some of that's transition. At this point, obviously, I don't want you to ruin the rollout, so to speak. But when you say you sort of have a very clear idea of what you have to do, and then you say innovation. Yeah. Any specifics you can provide? Well, look, PayPal hasn't delivered the value proposition to its consumers or its merchants uh, over the last few years that I think we're capable of. We have more data. We see awesome. exactly what people are purchasing around the world. So we need to make a better value prop proposition for consumers, put more money in their pockets. For our merchants, we have the ability to leverage AI to deliver an incredible improvement in their conversion rates. And then we have to let our small businesses and our consumers connect, leveraging AI-driven personalization. And you believe All right, so we got some bu buzzwords in there, but I do think this cannot be overstated these guys have more data than any payment provider on earth, almost. Like, he's going to go over some stats in a second here. I'm not going to spoil it. But these guys have data. And the fact that he's looking to focus on that to help small business enterprise and consumers, it's awesome. Good stuff. I believe that that, for example, offer, using the data more effectively for particularly the merchant side can bring what higher profit margins i mean you know how does this translate well look we have over 35 million merchants that are using paypal when we improve their conversion rate it improves their business it improves our bottom line uh we're kicking things off on the 25th I mean, you do have an awful lot of data you ever consider just selling it or working with others as well to sort of pool that data in some effective way you know stupid idea you don't you don't sell your data your data is your cash cow that's just dumb commentary now our the data is our customer's data. It's our consumer's data and our small businesses. That too. It's it's about the customer and it's about helping facilitate them. You don't share it. You don't sell it. Very smart. This data, what we need to do is leverage AI to make it better for them to be able to grow their businesses. Small businesses are under a ton of pressure right now. It is hard to be a small business in good times. It's not good times right now. We can give them an advantage. Advertising costs have gone up twice, 2x over the last few years, we need to be able to give them the opportunity to leverage the data that they have and improve their, their business. Setting the business proposition for why they should be using PayPal. I love it. Good stuff. 
Right. All right. When you speak to investors now, and it also is encapsulated to a certain extent in some of these analyst reports as well, uh, competition comes to mind. Your lack of uh, significant profit margin expansion and or actually uh, lack of profit margin, you know, Apple pay, buy now, pay later. Do you have an answer to these? You talk about what is a still relatively dominant position, but at the same time, it seems as though you've taken on a lot of business that doesn't really have a margin associated with it. Yeah, I think we have... Uh done too many acquisitions over the last few years and we've been defocused. Uh, it was one of the things I noticed when I came in 100 days ago, we've got a lot of priorities. We've narrowed those down, five key priorities, all focused on profitable growth. And so I think you'll see us start to move away from some businesses that we may have been in and really focus our energy and our efforts on building profitable growth going forward. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, Joining so that was the short now. version of the video. Um, for some reason, they didn't go through all of it, but it, but it's good though. It covered the basics. I think that the key takeaways from this, and I'll I'll just I'll, I'll I'll focus on those. I do want to say real quickly. I want to say some of the things that they missed. He asked about performance over the holidays. Uh, Alex responded back with, "It's very good," and he said it continues into January. They asked about the consumer and their ability to be able to spend. Alex said. Times are tough right now. There, there appear to be people that are concerned, but spending is not an issue. Customers are still spending on PayPal. That's a good take, not just for PayPal, but for the economy as a whole to take away from this. Uh, he, Some of the things that I love that he talked about, he said, we're not just focused on growth and revenue. We're focused on profitable growth. That is what needs to happen. Also, just at the end of the video, he mentioned that there were too many acquisitions that occurred and that that's something they noticed right away. And there's some unprofitable sectors they need to get away from. That is layoffs. That means that dead parts of the business that are not providing value are going to go away. There's something I don't know if it was in this video, the short little clip, but I'll go over it real quickly. There's something where he talked, he at one point said single platform. He wants a single platform. They also want to have Venmo be a key highlight of this because the youth, younger people, are using Venmo. They're not using Zelle. Older people use Zelle. People that bank with, well, certain banks, anyway, a bunch of them, they, they use Zelle. But that's what's dying. Companies like SoFi, PayPal, these are the companies that are going to transition and come in and replace them. So I think it's important to note that he recognizes that Venmo is their younger demographic. He recognizes that they need a single platform. He recognizes that there's unprofitable portions of the company that need to go away or be consolidated. This is all good stuff. These guys have 400 million customers, 35 million merchants. And I don't know if it's in this clip, maybe I missed it, but 20, he said 25% of the world's e-commerce goes through them. I don't know what to tell you. That's a huge number. This is not a dying company. This is a company that's being brought, brought back to life, in my opinion. AI was used a bunch of times as a buzzword. I think the thing that, that Alex was trying to focus on is if they're doing 25% of the world's e-commerce, they've got data galore. And they can help small businesses and, and enterprises and merchants figure out how to close deals. They can be in the middle for buy now, pay later. They can make it to where they're pulling in more revenue from the businesses without having to throw a bunch of fees on the average consumer. I'm, I'm excited about this. I think this guy has vision. He's replaced all of the leadership team. He is ready to rock. I can't wait for January 25th. I want to see what these guys are, are, are up to. Um, I think that I think they're going to start blowing the pants off some people. And narratives change. You got to realize, don't focus on stock price. St stock price is stupid. And analyst downgrades, these people, most of them aren't worth their weight. They do not know what they're talking about. They follow along with others so that they can hopefully get a decent return that outperforms a few other people so they can keep their job. So don't focus on analyst downgrades. Alex said there's 43 of them watching the stock. 43. Imagine what happens when they start going, wow, Alex and team are really impressive. They've got a vision. They're already executing at this. 
those downgrades will turn into upgrades and you can make a ton of money off of that. I haven't sold one of my PayPal options. I have 3000 contracts last I checked for January, 2025, and I'm going to hold them. I'm inspired by this. Now, those options that I'm in, the January 2025s, they got to move. I bought them a long time ago. I bought them in June, something like that. And and options need to go somewhere. And they haven't went anywhere but sideways to down that, for the stock price. So it needs to move. But I am very, more, than, more than happy to hold on to the stock for another three months to see how it goes. Um, maybe, I mean, to July just to give them two quarters to execute because I think that it'll end up benefiting me. So I'm not letting go and I haven't sold a dime. Um, was up, I had like a quarter of a million dollars in this stock. That's how much belief I have that Alex was going to be able to turn this around and make this into a great company and do it in quick order. And I believe that narrative will change. I think it's going to start becoming really positive. And when it becomes positive, everybody jumps on the bandwagon. Um, and I wouldn't want to be at the end of that. Anyway, uh, love you guys. Thank you for watching this. Have a great day.